In this month's episode of Table Tennis Talk, we wrap up 2020 with some of the most anticipated tournaments of the year, the ITTF Finals and WTT Macau. This is the first WTT event and gives us a lot to look forward to next year. We also talk about the exciting new virtual reality table tennis game, 11 Table Tennis. And finally, we want to wish all of our listeners a happy holidays. Thanks so much for your support this year. everyone and welcome to another episode of Table Tennis Talk. This is our December episode. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Lewis, and I'm here with Joey Cochran. What's up, Joey? Hey, Ryan. How you doing? Oh, man. What a month. This what month has month. been one of the busiest months of my entire life, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No no biggie. Um, it's one of the reasons it's uh, this podcast episode is a little later than usual. I think I've Probably, I don't know. We could we could have a contest see whose month was busier, but you'd probably uh, <laughs> win. <laughs> was, we were talking earlier, man. You've been working every day. Seems like long hours. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a I don't have a newborn, so <laughs> you might have me beat there. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's um, yeah let's jump into our months. How how has your November December been? Um, yeah, so, I mean, we had Thanksgiving, so we had, uh, my family came out from Indiana, my parents came out, um, so they were, they were here for about eight days, um, wow. we, uh, yeah, that was, that was really fun, um, did a lot of hiking and stuff with them, um, we, my, so I've, my business thing that I think I mentioned a few times on the show is really just taken off like crazy, so, um, I, yeah, I, I went and bought some inventory. I, I sold out and then I bought four X of my inventory and that sold out like within hours. Um, yeah. and now I'm like five X, the four X that I'm in escrow right now <laughs> buying. So, um, that's just been really hard to, to keep up, um, with demand. So, which is probably yeah. a great thing to be it's a good position problem. to be in. Um, so that's been really good. Uh, I'm really busy with that. Um, my baby's been growing up. He's uh, rolling <laughs> over and reaching for things. And um, he's like, I mean, when you have a newborn, you always have to kind of just like watch him all the time. But now yeah. it's like he's starting to do things. So you really have to watch him. Like <laughs> when he, like when he's rolling over and stuff, like I don't want him to get into anything or like, grab i don't know he's not crawling yet but he definitely can roll off counters if i just stick him up on the counter or whatever and you just like have to really watch him all the time so <laughs> that's yeah. been a little bit of a challenge um luckily he's working, my wife he's is really good his, at it better than me so yeah he's been working on his footwork i see yeah definitely <laughs> getting there he's got strong legs i don't know i mean i again I, i've never really had newborn experience like this is yeah. my first baby and i was the youngest and haven't really um been around infants before but like oh, yeah. i'm always pretty surprised at like his leg strength i always tell my wife like he's got those ping pong thighs because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can stand up done. i mean he doesn't have the balance but he can stand up and i don't know cool. it's pretty pretty neat that's but, awesome yeah it's been it's been a good month it's been a really good month. Very busy, but good month. Anyway, how's your month been? It's good. Just work. I feel like, um, I mean, as we'll talk about, I feel like uh, ping pong has been the last thing on my mind, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> it's just a, a couple tough deadlines, and I've been having a crunch to hit them. Um, so that's been uh, unfortunate. But um, I did make time. I, I got an... So I've been trying to get either, I think I might have mentioned it last time, either a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox, like either one of them. I'm okay. And they're sold out everywhere, um, and which has been very disappointing. But I was like, okay, if I can't get, if I can't have those, 
I'll get an Oculus Quest 2. And it was kind of like the, I don't know, I wasn't expecting a lot from it. Um, but holy crap, it's amazing. <laughs> and there is a table tennis game on there, which I, I did not give much credit to. Because I played VR ping pong games before and they're no good. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually and reviewed some of them on on our podcast before. We have, and they were not they were not good. I mean, like I couldn't I couldn't play Pat. Like I was just like I can't do this. So this this game. So first of all, it's it's available on Oculus Quest Two. It might be available on the Quest One, like some of the other Oculus VR headsets. People might know not want to know what the Oculus Quest Two. It's a VR headset. It's completely standalone. So there are no wires. You just stick it on your head, and you've got two little controllers. And you just you just do VR, and <clears throat> I think it has cameras on the outside to do like spatial recognition, and then it's got like accelerometers, and somehow they've got all these things so that the it just it just works, and it's really impressive. Um, as far as VR by, goes, I think Oculus yeah. is like on the cutting edge of it all. Like they're the yeah the the name brand of virtual reality. <laughs> Definitely They're really cool. Yeah. yeah. They were kind of one of the first in this newer age too. They did like I think they started from a Kickstarter for the original one. Wow. Um I didn't know that. That's so, pretty neat. So this one's brand new. It just came out like a few months ago. And um so I get this table tennis game and I'm like, okay, we'll give this a shot. And like it is so good. It is it is like <laughs> It, it transports you. I don't. I don't know how to. I don't know how to say this, but it like transports you into the world that it that it has, which is just like a room with a with a table. But the graphics are 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 excellent. the The VR itself is is very good. It like um, it has a refresh rate fast enough so that like you don't have to. Um, you're not getting nauseous or anything. And the controllers are very, very sensitive. So um, it is able to... So I, I know the... I, I was kind of like in, investigating the game and the studio who put the game together and they're very like invested in making an accurate like physics and accurate um, kind of everything about a uh, table tennis um, game. And so they... Um, you can get the... You can go in the... You can either have the basic paddle or you can have the advanced paddle. And the advanced paddle has um, actual like um, slider bars for like spin and speed and like I think something else that you can adjust. Um, and it really there you can put all sorts of different spins on the ball and it and it's like accurate to how you like hit the ball. Um, like I was doing, uh, it, it's. You kind of have to play around with it. The kind of like the um, the like shovel serve doesn't work too good. Um, like it, it's okay, but like sometimes the the ball toss is a little wonky because you have to like let go of the trigger with your with your left hand. And so I've been doing like more like kind of like a tomahawk serve, and that actually works really well. But it's like the side spin that you put on it, it adjusts the ball, and it like in when it hits their racket, it spins off in the other direction. It's it's so cool. I so you sent me a thing about this earlier in the week and I was watching a video of of people playing and I was like one of the big things that I noticed was the serves and how like realistic yeah. the serving was cuz that's never really been done before especially like totally. Especially like with like the, so someone whoever was playing the game um, had like a just like a pendulum serve but he was hitting yeah. underneath the ball, and I was like, on one of them, I was like, "Oh, he's way too flat on that one." And then the ball actually did what I expected it to do in real life, yeah. where it just like it didn't go forward very much. It ended up serving in the net, and yeah. it was like it was cool to see it. And when he did it properly, the serve actually worked, and it was backspin on it. And yeah, I don't know. I was really impressed. And I mean, I haven't played it yet, but it was impressive. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to try it and out sometime. Yeah, and so one of the crazy things is um, it has online multiplayer and you're playing against other people and it feels like they're like 
in the room with you. It is crazy because you see you see their paddle and you see their other hand, their other controller, and you see a mask, kind of where their mask is. And like, what's amazing is how much almost like personality can come through with that. Like I played two different people. I played a couple matches with two different people. And like, I could, they were like different people. Like the way they served, the way they kind of moved. They like, um, you know, you, you come into a game with somebody and you wave with your paddle. And then like, you know, you like kind of clap if somebody gets a good uh, shot. Like it's, there's almost like this, like, apparently there's like, there, there's a very thriving, um, like kind of community of people playing this online, which is really cool. Um, it's, it is a little weird with the latency. Like it's the ball will like look like it goes off the table and then they will like hit it. So there's like, there's almost like a, a cadence that you have to adjust to. Like it's not, it's not like as like as fast as like a normal game. Um, so that's a little weird to get adjusted to, but like, honestly, like, I don't know. Like it, it, it kind of doesn't matter. Like it's still really fun to play and it's enough. It's close enough to real ping pong that it, it, it feels, it feels this almost the same. I would say it's like 85 to 90% of like the feeling of like playing a real game for somebody like me, maybe not for somebody like you, but that's really cool. And like, especially during these COVID times, I mean, this, yeah, you can practice your serves or you can practice, VR ping pong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and the the one thing I've noticed is I've I've really been trying to loop the ball, right? And uh, what I've what I realized is that I can't loop the ball like my normal speed because it 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 the controller moves too fast and it loses the tracking. Whenever oh. I try to just like just like wail on the ball, I I just miss it completely because it just loses the tracking and it doesn't. Um, it doesn't do that. So that's the only like thing that I've really noticed is like weird with it. Um, but everything else, man, I'm, I'm so excited because this is like legit the table tennis game and, um, it's called 11 table tennis. So I, <laughs> I don't know if I even mentioned the name, but 11 table tennis. If you've got, um, Oculus VR or steam VR, it's on there too. Um, it is absolutely worth picking up. Another thing I I saw, I think you might have sent this to me earlier this week also, is some guy printed off like with a 3D printer an actual racket handle that he yeah. uh, connected to the controller. So you're actually playing with this this ping pong paddle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, pretty cool. <laughs> that looks really appealing because one thing is the backhand is, the backhand doesn't really work um, because it's like you can't, you can't like twist it around enough to to get a, a good backhand. It kind of like stays, I don't know, there's something with the controller that it's just like, I feel like you'd have to adjust it in a different way to get it to work. And I I don't know, I didn't, didn't play around enough with it, but the backhand's a little weird. Hmm. We'll have to, man, maybe for Christmas, I'll have my wife put that on my, my shopping list. Yeah, man. Her shopping there, list. <laughs> They're sold out a lot of places, so uh, are they? Oh, okay. Yeah, you might have to ask Santa to get it. Oh, I so I have a good relationship with Santa, so that should work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about some new um, upcoming things. Uh, one one new thing I, I I don't think we've talked about yet is uh, Timo Bull started a YouTube channel um, like a few a few months ago, a couple months ago, mm -hmm. um, and. I know, like we've we've kind of both watched a few of them. I just thought it was worth mentioning because um, he it looks like he did a, he did like a YouTube channel a long long time ago. Um, like it looks like it was actually started three years ago, but he started posting recently. I think with vlogs and stuff and um, in English, which is which is good for us. Um, and um, I don't know. It's 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 interesting. It's kind of. You don't usually get to hear uh, table tennis stars, somebody of um, Timo's caliber, uh, talk a lot, uh, and so kind of to, to get inside his mind, I think is pretty neat. What did you think? Um, I've actually only seen his videos that are in German, <laughs> <laughs> so I 
I didn't get as much out of it as I probably could have. So <laughs> some of his videos are in English, some of them are in German. And the German, I mean, I don't speak German, but in the German videos, you could kind of follow along with like, he was showing different techniques and movements and stuff. So, I mean, I don't understand what he's saying, but I can see what he's doing. So, uh, yeah. So I haven't watched a whole lot of it because I actually didn't know he had anything in English. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah should, just we now, should have so. brought this up a long time ago. Yeah, seriously. So, uh, I mean, I've seen a few of them, but just to kind of see his technique and stuff, but not really gotten a whole lot out of it because it's been in German. So, I'll have yeah. to check out his English stuff. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, so there's also it looks like the women's. <laughs> we got we got a little confused on this. So the women's Europeans champion Champions League just actually wrapped up. Um, I think in December um, and the men's I believe is starting soon. Uh, this is another man. This is another one of those cases where it's like, it's, it's, it's harder than it really should be to figure out when table tennis is playing and who is playing and when these links are starting or stopping. And so it's so weird. Cause like know. a month ago I was looking this up, the women's champions league. Um, and I could have sworn it was starting like last week, but maybe I misread it or something <laughs> like, cause I think it ended like last week. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's kind of weird, but, um, I, I would, I would love like, there needs to be, I mean, maybe this is one of those things where it's like, well, you should build it, Ryan. But like, there needs to be some like unified, like table tennis source of information. I mean, there's like, there's like the, the, the table tennis this subreddit. Is it. This podcast is it. <laughs> yeah, this podcast. <laughs> like there's table tennis daily. There are sources of like forums and, and things like that. It's just like when there's. I don't know. It's like there's uh, there's probably no no money in it. I mean, that's that's probably the reason it doesn't really exist. There could um, be though. I mean, if someone wanted to put it together, like there are. I mean, you have the forum, right? And then you can have affiliate links or sales links or whatever. I mean, there's you could you can make money on ad Google Ads or whatever if you have people coming to your website, just traffic. But yeah, um, getting yeah. it started and getting like people interested in it to begin with would be a pretty big undertaking, I think. So, But if you're out there listening and you want a challenge, <laughs> that is a, a challenge and we'll be the first to subscribe because yeah. we want to know all about the, the ping pong news and we'll report oh, it man. here. For sure, for sure. All right, let's uh, move on into um, some real challenges. So we before, had two... Before we move on, uh, oh, one more news update. Uh, if you're in the U.S., um, USA Table Tennis just announced that all sanctioned tournaments are canceled through January 15th. So we haven't really had a whole lot of direction from USATT um, until now. Um, so it's, I mean, it's kind of a bummer that they are canceled through January 15th, but it's also kind of good because there's at least like something from them because they haven't really given us anything. They've just been like, be careful out there if you're going to ha have a tournament, but we recommend not. And they <laughs> like, but they were they still sanctioning it. tournaments, right? They were, but they made it much harder um, oh. to do it. So this also means, I mean, this isn't probably any big news, but like the U S open, which is normally in December is canceled, obviously. So, right. um, yeah, every, everything's canceled until at least January fifteenth or through January fifteenth. So, man, it's not an upcoming event. It's the lack of upcoming events for <laughs> USATT. <laughs> Some of this stuff is weird. I mean, like I get like I get how difficult it is to to predict the future, but it's kind of like what is going to be different in a month. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, like it seems like most tournaments, like. The people who have been hosting tournaments, they've had to go through a lot of more, like a lot more hoops to jump through. But oh yeah, like why not just keep doing it that way? It seems like it's been working. I mean, unless yeah. maybe they got sued or something, I don't know. But like, there doesn't it, nothing has changed from this month to la from last month. So like, why if they were going to cancel everything through January fifteenth, they should have done it in like July. <laughs> like or cancel everything until further notice like why cancel things now i think i know so i'm looking on table tennis daily and um there was a 
outbreak, a COVID outbreak at um, ICC in California, oh, really? uh, big table tennis. There was a juniors tournament and six out of 36 people have tested positive. Oh, wow. Which means there's probably a lot more. Um, so th- maybe maybe it is in response to that. Um, it could be. Yeah. yeah. That's so, probably what it is. That's too bad. Well, January 15th, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what tournaments there would have been anyways between now and... I mean, they just announced this like a week ago. Um, December 7th, so it was a little more than a week ago. Uh, okay, okay, so, so probably not related. They, I mean, I don't know what tournaments there would have been between now, like this month, besides the U.S. Open, so probably sure. not a whole lot anyway. Um, but kind of odd, but whatever. Well, yeah. At least there's some direction from USATT. I usually don't have that much confidence in them. Yeah, that's good. Maybe this is a, a new, <laughs> turning over a new leaf for them. Yeah, hopefully, maybe this is like a way to like let's cancel everything, but then on January fifteenth, let's like start again. Maybe it's like maybe like a restart, kind of like yeah. there's a date like yeah. you can have tournaments now, so maybe they'll have tournaments because everyone's just kind of on hold. It seems like so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now let's move on. Are you ready? Any more news that I did, that I forgot? Uh, about? <laughs> that's all I think. That's all that I can think of. Okay, cool. All right. ITTF finals. So we had we had two big tournaments since we uh, last had an episode. Um, these are, I believe, the the ITTF finals. Was it the last tournament of the China bubble, or was WTT Macau included in that China bubble experience? Do you know? The Macau was included in the China bubble. Yeah. Okay, so the cool. players they went from the World Cup to the ITTF finals to Macau. It was one week cool. after another, three weeks in a row. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so um, ITTF Finals is in the middle, and um, th- this was maybe the last like non WTT event as we know it. I mean, like I think from now on everything's WTT, right? I think so. Yeah, this was the very yeah. last one. So um, I don't know. Did uh, did you see much of it? I didn't watch a whole lot of this one because um, the World Cup was right before. I watched some of the earlier rounds, um, and then I think we were chatting about it a little bit while it was going yeah. on, um, but I didn't actually watch the later rounds. Um, uh, I watched yeah, the yeah. results as they came in, um, <laughs> but it's just been a really busy, busy month. So we'll go over some of the results here. So let's actually start yeah. with the World Cup, um, at least in the men's. So. The World Cup was be- the finals was between Ma Long and Fan Zendong. Yeah, and Fan Zendong won that one. I think in seven games, four to three, pretty close match. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, um, and then in the ITTF finals, in the finals of the ITTF finals, it was again Ma Long against Fan Zendong. So this was a tough matchup. So we were talking a little bit about this where. We were predicting that Ma Long would actually win this one because just the week prior, Fan Zendong had won, and yeah. there's like a there's like a mental hurdle to go through um, to beat the same person twice, like w- two weeks in a row, like that yeah. is is very tough because, I mean, for one, like you kind of feel pretty confident that I mean you just beat him, you can beat him again, kind of thing, um, sure. and then Ma Long is like, well, he just beat me, I'm gonna go and kick his ass kind of thing. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to let sure. it stand. So, I mean, he's got a little bit more motivation to go and beat the person, um, the second time yeah. going through it. So, and he did. So Malong actually won this in the ITTF finals final, um, four games to one and was not close. Yeah. Wasn't it wasn't close very like close it was before. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, another thing that I noticed was, um, uh, so most of the matches seemed pretty, pretty much, as they were before. Um, but one thing that stood out was, um, Zhang Wujin from, uh, uh, South Korea, who, you know, is a good player, but normally doesn't really make a big splash. Um, he actually made it to the semifinals. Um, and this was the, the, the second time, cause in the men's world cup, he also made it to the semifinals. So, um, it's kind of impressive to see him, uh, playing, uh, so well, and these big tournaments, um, I guess he uh, he was doing a lot of practicing um, while he was in quarantine. Yeah, 
it was interesting watching. I mean, we talked about this a little bit last time where the players looked really sharp. Their serves all looked yeah. really good. Um, like you could definitely tell that people were wanting to play and that they had been practicing and just like they had all the energy in the world and they were ready to just go out on fire. <laughs> it, was, right. it was cool to watch. Right. Yeah. Um, with the women's, um, Chen Meng uh, took the the gold, I guess it was. Chen Meng beat Wang Man Yu uh, four to one. Um, she continues to be completely dominant. Like, I, I can't think, like she won the Women's World Cup um, I can't think of anything she hasn't won <laughs> recently. Um, not not WTT, not WTT Macau, but um, man, like Sh- Chen Meng is like just killing it. Mm-hmm. She is. She it's is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Wang Menyu beat Mima Ito in the semis for that one, so uh, that was kind of disappointing. It was. It wasn't close. Yeah. It was four zero. Um, that's really when I stopped watching. <laughs> like when Mima went down, <laughs> I was like, okay. I, I can, I can stop now. Uh, yeah, Mima yeah. did beat. Uh, I forget which one. She beat a Chinese, uh, one of the lesser known Chinese, Yidi Wang. Um, I hadn't heard of oh. her, but it was a close match, four three in the quarters, um, and then yeah, then she went down in the semis. So I'm always cheering for Mima. It's definitely one of yeah. my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before well, we go too far, though, going back to the men's, uh, Wu Jin Jang. Sorry, I keep going back and forth. We forgot to mention that he beat he beat Lin Gao Yen in the quarterfinals of that before losing oh, to Fen yeah. Dong in the semis, which is a pretty good win, a great win, really. Um, he beat him four three, which yeah. So that was that was a pretty exciting match to watch. So, sorry, that's really that's, impressive, though. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a, a lot. That's a great win for him. So yeah, with us being busy this month and and trying to pull this together, I think. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm a little scattered. That's okay, as usual. But yeah, that's that. Um, I, I'm excited because you know it's one of those things where I'm I'm always excited when there's a when there's a reasonable competitor to like Chinese dominance in the sport. Um, I think you are too, and so. Yeah. Zhang Wujin or Matias Falk or um, Francisca or um, Harimoto, like all of those are like Kanak Ja. Kanak Ja, yeah. He's <laughs> he's 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 gonna I think twenty twenty one is gonna be a big year for him. I think you're um, I feel like he is on the cusp of just like beating so many good players. Um, yeah. he he either wins or loses very closely and yeah. just he has just a little bit of a hurdle to jump and then he's I mean, he'll be up there with Falk, and I mean, he already is up yeah. there. Um, he hasn't beat any of the top Chinese yet, but it's been—he's right. had a few close ones. Yeah, for sure. You want to talk about Macau? Let's move on. You have a lot of thoughts about World Table Tennis Macau. Um, happened at what the middle? I guess the beginning of December is when it took place. Middle of December. It ended ended about a week ago. Yeah, end of end of November. Um, yeah, I think it was November 25th to 29th. So Got it. Yeah, over Thanksgiving. Um, so we finally got to see what WTT was all about. And it was incredible. <laughs> it was so <laughs> <Yeah>. good. <laughs> Everything about it was what table tennis needs to be. Like, yeah. they had the money, they had the atmosphere, they had, like, the... It, it felt like a spectator sport, which is really what it needs to be. So like starting with the tables, like they had these new really sleek tables. There's a black surface with um, orange lines, which is really cool. And then the lighting was kind of like a dark lighting. Um, And I've played in environments like this. So Mm -hmm. I've killer spin. um, They're a company based out of Chicago. They used to have these tables that were black and they were so Mm -hmm. nice to play on because you had like a white ball or even an orange ball, but like a white ball on these black tables. It was just like crisp. Everything looked clean Mm -hmm. and sleek and it looked great. So I I remember playing on those tables and thinking like, why the heck don't we have more black tables? So with with Macau or in Macau, they had these black tables with orange lines looked really cool and then the lighting um i don't know if you've have you ever been to a spin club like spin new york or spin la or any of those 
seen videos, but I haven't been personally. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's kind of weird. So like the it's in a club and it's dark. Yeah. But when you when you walk up to the table, it's like I mean I played in I played in many of the spin clubs and Spin New York was the first one I played in and the only way like it was packed like it was I mean there were I don't know hundreds of people in this club and they were they were like a wall of people around the the table but you couldn't see any of them and yeah. but like everything under the table and in the court was like you could see perfectly and I don't know what it is with the lighting but huh. it's like it's like above lighting I don't know what it is and it just it feels like you're in this closed in bo- box but you're not and that's kind of how Macau felt as a spectator like it's kind of dark but it, it everything looked crisp and maybe it's because of the table or I'm not really sure what but looked really good on camera and that's cool um, the courts were were big and cool um, they had like when the players came out there's like steam and they had like uh, <laughs> like their player stats and their profiles and stuff on these big yeah. screens and it also it was almost like a WWE like professional <laughs> fake wrestling um, scenario like layout but it was it was really really cool um, did they have their own theme songs I think that they did I think they did. That's cool. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure they did. I think I I saw a couple of the openings, but I think I had the sound off or down, and so oh. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. I'd have I to go back and check, had... but I'm, I think they did. <laughs> I, cool. I know they do that in baseball, <laughs> probably in WWE. Yeah. I don't watch WWE, but I've seen previews for it. Yeah. Or WWE what about the players? Um, yeah, the player list was weird. So there were no Japanese players there. Um, Lily was there from the U.S., but Kanak wasn't there. It was invite only, so they had, um, I think, twenty players or so. Mm. They were, I forget how many players. Twenty, I think, yeah, invite only. So, yeah. So yeah, no fans in Dong, which is kind of weird. But Fang Bo was there. So if <laughs> he was he, Fang Bo, for those who don't know, he was like he came out of nowhere in China and was super dominant for like a year, and nobody could beat him. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. And I hadn't seen him again until this tournament. This is like, yeah, so he came back for this tournament. Um, That's weird. Did pretty well. He didn't win, but... I wonder yeah. if they brought him back just to kind of add add some kind of new flavor or unexpected element. I mean, there was... Um, I, I mentioned it to you, um, Chen Ching Tong, who took the women's, she was almost the same way. Like, about a year and a half ago, she was um, at the top, and then she kind of disappeared. I don't know if she had an injury or what, but um, they brought her back, and then she took the whole thing. Um, that's... Yeah, that's weird. And it being invite-only, that, that kind of makes me think, like, if they're inviting these players that, you know, there's like a... They, I would assume they have some reason um, to uh, to bring them in, aside from like I don't I don't know just aside from picking the top players, you know they're picking these players for a reason. I think so. Yeah, I think maybe matchups or like yeah, like Feng Bo. It's in China, so maybe yeah. he's like a hype person. Um, bring in more money or spectators. The spectators were kind of weird because there weren't any. Um, <laughs> until like the finals, and then I noticed in the finals it looked like a full stand. So I'm not really sure what that was about. Um, yeah, it was weird hearing the applause because it's kind of like, aren't we still like in a pandemic? Like, what's going? <laughs> yeah. Like, how are they? How are they adjusting these? How are they like fitting these people so that people aren't like breathing on each other? Uh, it seems a little weird. Yeah, that was yeah, that was kind of weird. I it, one of the things that. Like my wife actually pointed out was like because we we were watching it on TV here and um, she was like they, what the commentator kept saying it, the players are pumped up by the music or something it's like yeah, because there aren't any fans there they have to use something to pump them up it's like <laughs> I don't know it's kind of he said it like three or four times so yeah that's and the music goes wild <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> So in the format for the tournament, we talked about maybe a little bit about this last time. Um, there, the games were sudden deaths, or there, there was no deuce, which was just kind of added to the excitement because hmm. when it's ten all, like next person who wins the point wins the game. Um, the final yeah. game would they would play out deuce, um, 
but there were a couple of games where it did go to deuce and it was just one point. And so if you were serving, if you had the, the first serve, you would serve first and then you also serve last at 10 all, which is a pretty big advantage. Mm. So you serve at 0-0 zero, zero, and then you also serve at 10-10. Ten, ten. So, I don't know, plays a little bit into the strategy maybe. Yeah. Um, huh. Every six points was you go back to the to take a towel break, but the towels were with the coaches. So you could actually have conversations with your coach every six points, which is kind of oh. weird. Um, differently like quick different. Ones or yeah, ones? it was. You also had a timeout, so I think that the six point thing was just like a quick conversation. Yeah. But I don't know. It, it didn't always seem very quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. That wouldn't be surprise me. I think uh, you know some players like to take forever, uh, you know, wiping their hand and checking their racket and getting the dust off the table. So um, yeah, that always me that they nuts. took a little. <laughs> if you're if you're losing, like yeah, maybe stall a little bit or try to break some momentum. I always like yeah. I like to play fast. I'm like I just that's just how I like to play. But and yeah. I mean I'll take advice from my coach. But if I'm in the middle of a game, like. I, he might have some good insights, but I I feel like I have a pretty good feel. Yeah, like I wouldn't. I don't know. I, I, I don't you're know. you're in the That's zone. Just, you want you don't want to break out of it. I I completely understand. Yeah, the announcements um, are kind of weird, um, or not weird, yeah. but different. Yeah. So they Adam wasn't there, and then um, they had they had two um, English guys. Um, Dan from Table Tennis Daily. It was kind of um, interesting who, to hear him commentate. <laughs> yeah. I think this was maybe the first, like, I'm, I'm sure he's probably done other stuff, but I think this was the first one he maybe had done for ITTF slash WTT um, that I'm aware of. Yeah, I had never heard him commentate before. And he did a pretty yeah. good job, I thought. Yeah, I think so. Uh, he was he was joined by Johnny Cowan, who is an ITTF marketing manager in Europe. And... Um, yeah, I thought that they probably, I, I don't think it was as good as Adam, but I think it was probably better than some of the other announcers they've had, in my opinion. Not not the one that they had for the World Cups. He was, he was actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it wasn't amazing, but it wasn't like, I wasn't like, please just turn this off. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm totally agree, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I I always like Adam the most. He's it, no one's really going to be better than him. I don't think he's totally. just he's so good. Um, but they were better than others. That I I agree. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the the prize money because this was money. probably the best part about the tournament because every match there was so much on the line. So there was almost ha- there was four hundred thousand dollars in total prize money. Which is a ton. <laughs> yeah. Um, you got fifteen thousand dollars just for showing up, and for the first match, if you won your like round one, then you made an additional twenty five hundred dollars. If you won two matches, then you win an additional five grand. So the the prize money doubled each round. Um, wow. You you got fifteen thousand for showing up, and then twenty five hundred, and then doubling each round. Um, if you went undefeated through the whole tournament, then you had a bonus of $10,000, um, which is pretty cool that no one went undefeated in this tournament. No. Um, the, the format was really interesting. So there were, there were 16 people at the tournament invites. Um, the first round was the, the bottom eight seeds. So there were four matches, essentially. Um, you win the match, you win $2,500, you go into the next round. And the next round, so seeds nine through sixteen had to had to play that first round. Seeds five through eight got seeded into that second round to play the four winners from the first round. And then what was really interesting was the top four seeds played a round robin against each other. And so so going back to the beginning, there were there were Four matches, eight people, four matches. They played the the seeds uh, nine through twelve. So at, the winners of those will go into the let me think the the quarterfinals. And 
the so okay so now there's four people in the quarterfinals that had to play into it and then the top four seeds played a round robin and the winner of the round robin got to choose who he wanted to play in the quarterfinals um. the second place in the in the in the top four seeded round robin got second choice of who he wanted to play in the quarterfinals and then third and fourth so if you made it to the quarterfinals, so this is really pretty cool because I'd never seen anything like this before. <laughs> okay. So in that final, in the, the top four seeds were uh, for the men were Xu Xin, Hugo Calderano, Ma Long, and Lin Gao Yen. And Xu Xin won the round robin, so wow. he got first pick <laughs> to to see who he had to play in the quarterfinals to pick who. He, so he he picked Matthias Falk. <laughs> In the quarterfinals, which was a huge mistake. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Matthias Falk, he's got to be thinking like, "Man, what the heck? That was a bad choice. Like, why would he pick me? Like, I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna go kick his butt." Like, so, and he did. <laughs> Shushin three, three yeah, so to Sh- one. Yeah, so Shushin picked Matthias Falk, and Matthias Falk beat him three games to one in the quarters. So he, he moved on to the semis. It's like, if she shouldn't have picked anybody else, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Like I wouldn't want to play, I don't know, Fung Bo or anybody else. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe he, uh... but you got to think like, I was the first guy he picked. He thinks I'm the weakest one here. Like screw that guy. <laughs> I'm going to go beat him now. Like I would totally go out with a, the chip on my shoulder and like want to win that match extra bad. I feel like there's a little bit of an alternate take on it in that, like, I feel like Shushin l- loves to play the game. And I would almost see him being like, I haven't played Matthias Falk yet. He's, um, you know, he, Matthias Falk's been doing incredible. And he's like, I want to play this guy and see what he's like, see how he plays and see how I do against him. Bad choice. Maybe, that, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what he, maybe that's what he was doing. I maybe it could be. Um, they probably cost him like I don't know fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, tell me about this final play yeah. with an orange ball. What's up with that? Yeah. So, the, I mean, traditionally, table tennis has been played with either a white or an orange ball. But when the forty plus balls came out, the premium balls were all just made with in white. Um, I think most players prefer the white. But yeah. just recently, a, a couple months ago, maybe over the summer, um, they started producing them in orange, and I still hadn't seen it, um, mm-hmm. at least not at a high level. Yeah. But uh, the finals of Macau was played with an orange ball, which is the first time I've seen it, and it was pretty cool. I don't know. It was different. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the finals was, again, uh, between Ma Long and uh Wang Chuchin, is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. Um, and Ma Long beat him five games to one. They played five out of nine. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is also new, right? Like I when actually when when eleven point games first started, matches were played f- either four to seven or five out of nine, and it was very seldom that any were three out of five. And uh-huh. then they kind of just standardized it, standardized it, said okay, three out of five or four to seven. Um, mm. But there isn't a rule like you could play. I don't know, fifteen out of twenty nine if you wanted to. So. Oh my gosh! But yeah, at least um, I don't think there's the, a rule. Yeah, for the women's, uh, Sun Yingsha bit, uh, beat uh, Chen Jing Tong, also five games to one. Which is uh, isn't it? Wasn't one of those games a weird game though in the final, like first to five or something weird like that? Um, yeah, there was a rule. I think that was in, man, I actually didn't see any of those. Um, (laughs) I watched most all of these matches, but I I remember reading that rule and I don't remember seeing it actually played out. I just feel like it shouldn't be that complicated. I mean, like, it's just... They definitely added a lot to this tournament. A lot of weird rules, a lot of just, like, trying new things. Um, it was definitely hard to follow. Like there was a whole new rule sheet that I I went through and was reading it, and it took me like two or three times to understand it all. Um, yeah. Definitely a lot of changes with this tournament. The, yeah. I want to say that the the five like playing to five or six or whatever. I want to say that was in like the 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 round robin that the top four seeds played each other in. But okay, I, that would I make could sense. be wrong. I don't. 
I don't remember where that was. I didn't see It'd that played we- out. It would be weird having that in like a in a game that you know would have given somebody like fifty thousand dollars if they wanted. That doesn't. That seems kind of weird. Yeah, it, there was so much money. Like if you look it up on ITTF's website, they have the the player breakdown and the money that each player won. Um, it's insane. Like. Ma Long, he won seventy-two thousand five hundred dollars. Um, Lily Zhang was there. Uh, she won her first round, so she made fifteen thousand dollars for showing up, and then an extra twenty-five hundred for winning that first match. Um, and actually, she she had to play the same player that she beat at the World Cup mm. um, in that second round. So that would, and she lost to her. So again, like. Playing each playing the same person twice in such a short period is is always really tough and t- tough yeah. to beat them twice. So Ma Long did it and won the second lost the first time, won the second time. Lily she lost she won the first time and lost the second time. So yeah. also another thing with the Macau is I don't think it applied world ranking points to it. So I think there were just so oh. many new rules that yeah. they decided were. We're just going to have fun with this and give away lots of money, and that's the motivation, which is probably a better motivator than world <laughs> ranking points. I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe world ranking is just good for pride. Where I don't know, I'd rather have the seventeen thousand. Yeah, you can uh, buy food with um with with the money. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we have a. Uh, it's not quite a weird world of table tennis uh, entry, but uh, a an interesting. Uh, interesting world of table tennis. That sounds stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how about a surprise, an unexpected? Uh, you, you've you found this. Uh, why don't you tell me about it? Yeah. So, I mean, China has a lot of really good players. Um, they start really young. A lot of them. So, <laughs> there's this one article that came out. It was probably a little over a month ago, a month and a half ago, um, of a three year old uh, playing table tennis and. I've seen these pop up from time to time, but this kid is incredible. Like his strokes are perfect. His like everything is is just so clean as you would expect from like a Chinese junior. But he looks like he could be. I mean, for Mary, he's probably eighteen, nineteen hundred with perfect strokes. And <laughs> um, there was a little article, a little bit of a video of him playing. They call him Little Rice Cake. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so it's. It's pretty fun, um, pretty cool actually seeing him play. Three year old, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, his form is so much better than mine. It's, kind it's of his footwork. The the <laughs> table that he's playing on, I can't tell. So he's definitely like on an elevated platform because I mean he's not tall enough. But yeah. I also think that the table might be shorter or smaller in some way. Uh, it's it doesn't. It looks modified. I should say. Yeah, you're right. Because he, he would probably. Video. Yeah, it does look like a platform because I think the the person on the other side is playing normal as an, a, a normal adult. They don't have two three year olds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it looks like it looks like he has on an elevated thing. Because um, I guess otherwise, like you know, he he'd barely be able to see over the table. Right. Yeah. That's probably that's probably why he's able to have like normal form whereas a lot of times with little kids they're just kind of reaching up uh-huh. um, so yeah I started when I was five or six um, and yeah. I actually that's kind of I, we didn't have a platform or anything or a small table and my strokes are are still impacted by my five year old strokes because I was just too short and wow so yeah like with little my baby Liam uh, I'm planning to teach him how to play ping pong and um I've already kind of figured out like a little platform to put him on so he doesn't have bad habits from starting young. I want to start him, I don't know, maybe three three years old. We'll see. That's cool. <laughs> well, now, yeah, yeah, now you got the target age. Yeah. This so kid's we'll been playing put- for a while, though, you can tell. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's got some good coaches. Yeah. So we'll be putting, I'll put the, um, I'll put the link in the show notes. Okay. Yeah. So, well, that's it for our episode. Any any last any last words before we go, Joey? Um, thanks for watching, listening. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Don't say it's, watching YouTube. Yeah. YouTube, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it's. I mean, 
I'm looking forward to the holidays. It's Christmas is right around the corner. New Year's yeah. is right around the corner. Um, having a little break from work. It's yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good good month. I think last month was a yeah. good month. I think December is gonna be even better. So I guess we'll yeah we're gonna hear uh, we'll talk to everybody next year, 2021. Hopefully, it'll be a better year for everyone listening and a better year for table tennis as well. Yeah, I'm. I'm, it's got to be right. Like 2020, <laughs> I mean, the vaccine's already being produced and like it, things are going to turn around. And I think that things are, when things start going back to normal, I think that they're going to come back to normal really quickly. Like everyone is just tired of the pandemic. And sure, I think like it's going to turn around. I think, I think next year is going to be a great year. It's going to be, it's yeah. got to be right. It's just, I don't know. People are itching to be outside and being active and tournaments are going to be flowing and people have money to spend because they've been not traveling and <laughs> yeah. doing anything. So maybe they've been yeah. buying Oculuses. If if you are <laughs> listening and you have an Oculus, like send us a message oh, yeah. on our Facebook or um, Twitter. Yeah. Twitter. Uh, yeah. Twitter. And let's play. <laughs> let's. Yeah. It'd be fun. That would be really fun. Cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. And um, we will <laughs> we will see you next year. All right. See you. Table Tennis Talk is a monthly podcast by Joey Cochran and Ryan Lewis. Edited by Dan Emery from Black Matter Mastering. Music on the podcast comes from Chill Hop Records. Find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And leave us questions, comments, or feedback on our Facebook page at Table Tennis Talk Podcast or on Twitter at TT Talk Podcast.